I was shooting a 360 sphere for a real estate company and I found that I wasn't able to get the quality I wanted. So through the DJI app, you actually get an image when you compile the whole 360 sphere uh, through the cell phone, for example, you get about a 2.6, 2.5 megabyte image when each of these individual 26 pictures used to make the sphere are about two and a little bit more megabytes per image. So I realized, man, I can get a lot higher quality image if I manually stitch them together. So what am I going to do? I'm going to find a way. With P2GUI, you can do it. But a lot of the tutorials were not for 360s and only got you halfway through and I found it very difficult. So I created this tutorial to help people that want to create high quality spheres, 360 spheres, using images from the DJI Mini 2 or other drones in general and uh, to be able to bring out the full quality. So keep in mind that there are going to be 26 images, 26 images, and the first image you're not going to use. The first image is actually not useful. Um, by the way, this is how it looks. Um, of course, this is not in the 360 mode, um, and I want to put a caveat here, okay? I'm sorry, it's not perfect, but because the drone can't shoot straight up, you will have a dead space here. So us using Photoshop or something else, you can find a solution for that. But right now, we're not focused on that. We're just focused on how to help you have a high quality image. And by the way, the compiled image right here, instead of being 2.6, is about 11.6 megabytes. So it's about five times more quality, a little bit less than five times more quality, and it really does show on Facebook. I have to zoom in a lot before I start getting pixels. Um, so it's worth the effort, it really is. So let me show you how I did this. So first thing we're gonna do is open PT GUI and then we're gonna go over and grab all the images. So it says that there are 26 images. So ignoring picture one, because picture one is actually a, it's like an extra, it's between picture, uh, picture two and picture three. I, I don't know why it allowed it to be like that, doesn't matter. Picture one is not currently useful for me. And picture two that you can see right here, or this is picture two panorama, is just a compilation. Don't worry about that. So I'm going to take between picture two and picture 26. So we're going to have a total of 25 images. So what we want to do is we want to create grids using PT GUI. Uh, and so using these grids is going to allow us to really look and to see how how these images align well. So the first thing we're going to need to do is image one through four. Um, so if you see the way that image one, uh, the, the, the way that the camera takes pictures, image one is high, image two is a little bit lower, image three is really low. Ignore image four for the moment, okay? Then you go to image five, it's a little bit more on the left, then it goes a little bit higher, then it goes a little bit higher, then it goes a little bit more to the left, and then it goes a little bit lower, and a little bit lower. And then it goes to the right, uh, to the left again, and it goes a little bit, uh, a little bit higher and higher. So that's the way. It's a zigzag pattern. It alternates. But the problem is that image one through four are a little bit different. They're a little weird because image four is straight down. It's a 90 degree picture straight to the ground. So because of that, we can't do a general um, a general grid like we would with all the other images. If you're not 100% sure what I'm doing, you can just do one thing. You can just follow exactly what I tell you and you're going to have a great result at the end. But I'm trying to explain it at the same time because this can also help you find solutions to other problems, especially if for some reason what you did right here today doesn't work. I'm not sure why. Maybe by my explaining it, it can still help you. So let's go into project and click align to grid. Align to grid. So once again, as mentioned, the first four images, and this is the thing, I didn't find in the tutorials a lot of solutions to this. This is why I decided to make this video. Image one through four. We're going to go image one through four. You might have to decheck the little box here. Um, and so we're, for image one through four, it's going to be a little bit different. OK, um, so uh, we're going to have to create a separate grid only for image one through four. They're going to be different. They're like really special. And they're very important because <laughs> you do not want to mess up the thing that's right under your camera. That's going to look terrible. So we're going to have rows. Uh, we're going to have four rows on one column because all the images are taken in one specific column and there's four different rows. I set the camera because I thought it could still be helpful to show you some representations I can't correctly explain through my words. Um, don't worry about shooting configuration or anything else right now. At this point, it serves no purpose. The first set is going to be very different. After that, it's going to be super easy, very streamlined, you're going to see. So we're going to click apply and then we can click the pano, pano viewer. 
As you see, it looks like absolute cancer, but you can still see that down the middle, there are some images that seem to be aligned. So you have something working. Yeah, why? Because image one through four are aligned. All the other images are not aligned yet. So we're gonna close that. We already clicked apply. Uh, but actually, I was a little fast. We're gonna go right back. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're gonna go image five through 25. Remember, it takes 26 pictures. Image number one is pretty much useless because it's a repeat and it really doesn't help you out. I could probably still have incorporated it, but honestly, I don't see the reason why. Uh, now we're gonna have to start messing a little bit more with this though. So we're gonna have three rows because once again, think of it like this. The camera, and, and once again, if you look at your app when it's taking the pictures, takes a picture here, takes a picture there, takes a picture there, then moves over, it takes a picture here, takes a picture here, takes a picture here, moves over, click, 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 all around. So we're gonna have three rows because it takes three pictures high, and how many columns are we gonna have? We're gonna have seven columns because in total, there are eight columns, but since we already did the first row, one to four, that row, that column is done for. We don't need to worry about that. So we're gonna create another grid to align with the original grid that we create. So when we create a gr grid, basically it's like these images are solidified together. And then we, we could create a dozen grids for this and then solidify all the images and then stick all the solidified images together, but obviously inefficient. We're gonna click stretch to 360 pano right here. So once you finish the grid, you go to horizontal axis and you click on the stretch to 360 panel. And uh, then we're gonna go to the shooting configuration. Uh, shooting configuration is by column because that's the way it takes pictures. It's from up to down to down to up. It's focused on that. It's not shoot all the way into a great circle and then another circle a little bit lower and another circle a little bit lower. It's by column. Um, zigzag pattern because it's not up to down, then up to down, then up to, no, it's up to down, then down to up. I'm going way too specific about this, a little bit autistically. Don't worry about it if you don't care. Um, and so it's gonna stop from the start from the top, right? Because that's the way, and this is also important if for instance, your drone doesn't take the same configuration of photos, it's important that I do explain this because this is only for the Mini 2, but if you have another drone, this is still valid. It's just that you need to know why you need to change what you're gonna change. So top right, because the camera starts taking pictures at the top right, and then goes down, and then it goes left. That's why. So if your camera starts on the bottom and takes shots up and then turns to the right, you're gonna have to take bottom left. If you can figure that out, it's not too hard. And then we're gonna click apply. Once you click apply, we can click on panorama editor once again. And what does this look like? It looks like not much, to be honest. <laughs> it really doesn't look like much. But what we're gonna click at this point is we're gonna go down here and we're gonna click align images. Uh, only search for control, oh, sorry about that. Align images, and it's gonna align images. So boom, it's just it got confused and it put it upside down, but don't worry about it, it works now. Now it doesn't look great because obviously this is still just the viewer and stuff, but this is your 360 images. See how everything actually congeals? Things actually work together. So that's really cool. Um, and then, of course, what we're going to be able to do at this point is we're going to, I suggest you do this too, go to Optimizer. Honestly, I'm not that smart. Um, I just click Run Optimizer, and it says it's really good, so I'm like, why not? Let's just click OK. Let's run that. And then you can go create a, a panorama. So you click Blended Panoramas, and you just go this, all this stuff, whatever, great. Uh, and then you click Create Panorama. I already have one, so I'm not. But you can click create panorama. So as you see, the width of the image is 9,518 by 4,759. It's a pretty large image, and you can even change the quality of the JPEG if you want. You can do all this stuff, and ultimately the end image is going to look something like this. It's going to look something like this, and then when you view it through a uh, pano viewer, so let me just see if I can see it right here really fast. Crap, I can't. Well, anyways, you can see that it turns out to be a really high quality image compared to what you get out of the app through the phone and or um, what you would get if you were just gonna take a screenshot. Looks a lot better. Uh, what do you guys think? Obviously, please leave a like if this helped you. This is not my regular type of content, but I'm doing a lot of drone stuff, so 
Let me get let me know what you guys think. Thank you and have an excellent day.